is finally back after a very long time. I was actually beginning to wonder if Hiromashima had actually forgotten her. Luckily, no, he has not. We still don't know who she is. Although technically we may know who she is, but we don't know why she is like that yet. So for now, we'll just have to <coughs> sorry, brace for impact. Because uh, she has dropped the ball that this will be a sadistic arc. Well, a lot of people did say that Eden Zero felt darker than his previous works. But a sadistic arc, hmm, that makes me a little worried. So me, the angry anime fan, the despair reviewer, here to bring you Eden Zero chapter 31. And what I mean by her, I mean the beautiful Xiao Mei again. For the first time in a long while we see her. She almost seems to have a new kimono. Either way, as a narrator of this story, she welcomes us all again and details what we mostly already know. That now, get, wanting to get the power of Eden Zero back, they uh, try to find the four shine stars. They find the witch and the foul-mouthed miracle healer sister. They have also found Hermit, but her heart seems damaged. So they entered into a digital world called Digitalis. And uh, she wonders what adventure awaits them. However, before she leaves us, she gives us a warning by saying that this story will be extremely sadistic. I'm truly sorry. Well, you know what? I prefer if an author, or technically it's not the author, but it's Xiaomei who's saying this, but seeing that this may very well be Hiromashima's words through Xiaomei, that she is the one who's talking, I prefer if an author do tell if a story is going to be sadistic, so we won't get so surprised. But still, I'm a little worried. This arc will be sadistic. Hmm. Well, that can mean anything. It can mean that we're gonna see a lot of deaths. It can mean that maybe one of the main characters are gonna die. Well, hopefully not. It can mean that... Uh, what we know will may, may not be true, and it may very well be that uh, Digitalis in itself may be shut down. Either way, <coughs> sorry, I, s I thought that I, I was actually on the finally fully healed, but who knows. The mysterious guy that greeted everyone, well it turns out that we have actually met that person before. Because it's Homura who has chosen a male avatar and has even created a backstory for that character. It also turns out that uh, the strange kangaroo rabbit thing is not uh, brown as I thought. It's purple and definitely not a horse because she wanted a white horse. Uh, well, as you know, black and white. And then suddenly uh, uh, another person appears. Uh, uh, and who is that? Well, that is Wise, having chosen a, an extremely skimpy and attractive woman looking. You know, here's what I can criticize. Of all the f characters who would do this, Hiromashima, you too? Gender bender, oh come on! I dislike those kind of moments in things, but also I have to realize that uh, this suits exactly well with Homura and Weiss's character. Homura, because Homura wants to be a knight, and uh, and uh, well, she has felt like uh, it was allowed, and Weiss, because well. It was an option, but also because uh, he's the kind of guy that wants to feel himself. You know, man, I feel like a woman, you know. So, I mean, granted, however, I can agree that... I mean, if I, don't get me wrong, I wouldn't want to turn into a woman, but... Uh, if I did have a female avatar that I would definitely feel, then yes, I would definitely want to feel her all the time. But I prefer not to play as female avatars. Because I'm afraid that other guys would flirt with me. 
but uh, I can definitely see where Weiss is coming from. So yeah, it makes perfectly sense for them to do this. Even if I don't uh, necessarily agree that they did do this. So, uh, and of course, uh, Rebecca just feels like they are being idiots for this. So Pino appears, and she is a normal, uh, cute-looking girl with the long rabbit-like ears. At least that is uh, acceptable. Then come, uh, then comes Shiki, who is a muscular man, and uh, so they make a new one, and uh, he chooses a barbaric look that has a long hair. Actually, lampshades a little thing of the fact that. A lot of people criticized Hiromishima over the fact that uh, they cut off uh, Shiki's long hair. So, because once he had that long hair, he didn't necessarily look like Natsu anymore. And now he even lampshades the fact that uh, uh, he has the long hair. So, I guess that's what I really like about Hiromishima's work. He's perfectly aware what the fans have or haters have felt, so he's always lampshading that. So, uh, either way, Rebecca shows them uh, uh, a special head-up display, a thing that you always see on the screen when you play the video games. So, uh, but she also reveals that while they can use their powers here, she says that they should not rewrite the planet's data, meaning that uh, Pino's EMP and Wise's uh, Machina Maker <coughs> may actually bug this, the digital world, even if it is self-aware. Because they see a town up close, and so they meet it. It's an amazing looking town, which even has some familiar faces with it. And uh, they even meet an NPC, uh, a, a mustache old man, who perfectly knows that they are players, proving what I said before is true that the EMCPs of this world have become completely aware. They know they are NPCs, and they know that some people are players. And the fact that they even know the fact that uh, they could just say limited amount of things when they were NPCs. Something like, uh, the, this mustache man would always greet players like, are you a traveler? Welcome to Drimlik, the town of Grinnery. Uh, so... And for him, it felt like a nightmare. <laughs> Almost scream situation. Uh, so his only happiness was when other players could unlock. So with that, they begin to look around. And uh, feel like uh, looking for uh, different situations to in order to find Hermit. It's pretty amazing, though, that... Uh, Homer is pointing out that everything is so realistic, so they may not be able to distinguish players from NPCs. Which is a little bit strange, though, that uh, NPCs are... St no, players are still coming, because technically this was a banned planet. So, uh, but Homer also warns them that uh, they may run into players with less than honorable intentions. So they go around, search for information. Homer, I mean, Wise tries to Lady Charm, but of course that doesn't work. To be honest, I'm not even sure why he decided to do that. I know he's a pervert for for women, but come on, are you telling me he's actually in, into that too? Or is he just playing the fact? One scene is very adorable, though, that Pino is looking herself in the mirror and just smiling. So please, uh, don't let that uh, innocent smile be lost, but I have a feeling something is going to happen to her. Either way, they've been looking around all over town. They haven't found a single reliable information about Hermit. And uh, they're not deciding to log in out either. So, uh, but then suddenly a strange person enters the inn, demanding a woman and branding a scythe. Because uh, implying that this may be a player or a highly dangerous advanced NPC. So yeah, this is basically this chapter. Again, I don't, I can't say I'm a fan of the gender bender like avatar situations, but I can perfectly see why they decided to do that. Although, I mean, Homer is the bigger question. I mean, she didn't really strike me as a person who wants to be a man, but uh, I guess it's more of the fact that uh, she wants to be a knight 
and she has a very similar like personality so I guess that was an option but wise I can definitely see why he decided to be that but that doesn't mean I like it Xiaomei appeared again that was a very welcoming addition so she is warning us that this is going to be a sadistic story for the first time I'm actually a little bit worried about the rating of Ed and Sarah every chapter has been a blast blessed but now the warning of citizen and as you all know I don't really like despair too much so we'll see so I mean uh, good chapter although I still rank it a little bit lower than many of the others the best part was was of course uh, Pino's human avatar so yeah what a waste us in this sadistic story and the fact that I think uh, <clears throat> Rebecca dropped the ball here. She said that Machina Maker and EMP shouldn't be used here because they risk crashing the game or rewriting the game. So why do I have a strange feeling that whoever is in this story maybe plans on rewriting the game totally or destroy it? In fact, who is this scythe person who demands a woman? Is that an NPC or is that a player who has just become a little bit too sadistic? Is that what she meant, what Xiaomei meant by saying it's sadistic, sadistic? Or is she implying that this will be, uh, sorry, the end of Digitalis? Hmm. Can be either way, can't it? So give me your thoughts if you have any.